Hot Wheels Unleashed is the game that Hot Wheels fans have been waiting and clamoring for, and it delivers. But that isn't to say it doesn't have a few downfalls. Hey there friends, how's it going? I'm Mr. Bo, and today we're going to be reviewing Hot Wheels Unleashed. I've put in a good few hours into Hot Wheels Unleashed, I've been playing it over the last week, and I've 100 percented the single player section of the game, and I've got a good feel for what works in this game and what doesn't work, and I'll be going over all that for you here. So if you aren't aware, Hot Wheels Unleashed is, as it suggests, a Hot Wheels racing game. It is the cross between an arcade and a kart racer. There are no power-ups or crates or anything like that you can pick up and throw at other people, but there is a boosting mechanic here which is kind of the main skill in this game. Drifting around corners builds up your boost bar and then you can use that boost to get ahead of other people. You also have different sections on tracks, for instance boost pads, pads that will slow you down, barricades that you need to avoid, spiders shooting cobwebs that will slow you down, things like that so the tracks stay fresh and not every track is just the same old thing. If you're maybe someone who's played the online stunt races in GTA Online, or maybe the Hot Wheels DLC in Forza Horizon, or even a game like Trackmania, this should feel right at home for you. If you are someone who more focuses on games like Mario Kart, Crash Team Racing, Nickelodeon races, this should still grab your attention and should still be a lot of fun for you. So when it comes to actual gameplay, this game is very floaty. It's a very loose controlling game, and that adds to the fact that you're playing with all these toy cars. And I will say, this game looks great. The shine on some of these cars, the track has fingerprints on it as if someone has literally just built this track in the middle of their college campus. The attention to detail here is fantastic. But the floatiness of the game, some people might really like that, some people might not, and it might be what deters them from this game. Personally, after a few races, I found myself really enjoying it. Being able to do a massive drift around a certain corner feels super satisfying and then just boosting straight out of that. While I really like the feel of this game, it can be very frustrating in certain scenarios. Because of the floatiness of this game, if you're drifting into a corner, maybe your back end hits the wall, your car can just flip up on its end or fly off the track, or if you're boosting up a ramp, you might hit the section where the ramp connects with the actual floor of the map and just do a front flip. If you're boosting up behind someone, sometimes you can just kind of take them with you. They'll go flying up above you and off the track. While there's a lot of skill in drifting and boosting with this game and avoiding the obstacles that we'll get to in a second, there is also a lot of luck with this game. And that luck can turn into frustration quickly when it comes to the time trials where you need to get a lap under a certain amount of time. Maybe you've got a perfect lap going, but the end of your car hits a certain wall and you go flying off and you need to restart from the beginning again. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a racer without some kind of way to boost off the start line and this game has that as well it is a little bit finicky here you need to hit acceleration between the three and the two appearing and there's kind of three versions of the boost purple which will give you three boost charges green which will give you two and just your normal boost which will give you one charge and again there's some skill here if you can master getting that purple boost every single time you're definitely going to do well in those races so let's move into the cars because that's a pretty important part of this game, especially it being a Hot Wheels game. Now there are 66 cars in this game. Five of those cars are secret cars that you can unlock through the single player by completing certain challenges or basically 100%ing the game. So if you are still holding out hope for a certain Hot Wheels car that you haven't seen in any of the promotional material, it might be one of these five cars. Now cars are split up into different categories. You have common, rare, legendary, super treasure hunt, and then secret. Common and legendary cars can be upgraded to the legendary status, so if there is a car that you really like that is maybe a rare car, you can put in your upgrade points that you'll unlock through the single player to upgrade your favorite car so it's better when racing against other people. Of course, these cars also have different stats which we touched upon. They include speed, braking power, acceleration, handling, and how much boost they have. And these stats aren't for show. You'll actually feel that these stats matter, especially in things like time trials where you need to get around corners as quickly as possible. So if you've got a car that doesn't handle well, you're just gonna be driving along the side of the road, stuck against the wall. Now, the problem I have with this game is how you unlock these cars. So as you play through the single player or every time you complete a race, you'll earn Hot Wheels coins. Now, the number varies depending on what you're doing. For instance, if you're doing the single player, every race or so you get 50. If you're playing a multiplayer match, if you win a race, you get 70. If you come second, you get 65. It kind of works like that. Now, if you save up 500 coins, you can spend them on a blind box. Now, a blind box will give you a random car. This car could be any car. It could even be a car you already have. 
Now if it is a car you already have, you can dismantle that for upgrade parts to put into another car, or you can dismantle it for money to then put into another blind box. However, there is also a shop where you can spend your Hot Wheels coins, and this will give you a rotating list of five cars that go from 500 coins all the way up to 2000 coins. So if there's a certain car you are after, you can kind of wait till it's in the store, but that might take a while. Now, I don't believe there's a way to actually buy Hot Wheels coins with real money. Well, I hope not at least. The online store wasn't available for me, so I don't know if you can do that. If you can, it could be seen as pay to win because you might just get a legendary car straight out of one of these boxes. Now you are given three cars to begin the game with, and there are specific cars that you can unlock through the single player mode. Some of those cars are needed for certain challenges, and you can also earn blind boxes quite easily through the single player as well, though there is only a certain number. I think this decision on how you unlock cars is gonna be very split in the community. For instance, in my third box, I got a legendary car, and that meant the first couple of races in the single player were pretty easy, and you're definitely going to want a legendary car when it comes to some of those later time trials. Now speaking of the single player in this game, Hot Wheels City Rumble, it is the weakest part of this game. It is very, very tedious. It gives you a map of a city, and on that map you have a ton of different nodes, some of those being races, some of those being time trials, some of those being blind boxes, some of those being secrets that you need to work out for yourself, and some of those being boss races. And I use the term boss race very, very loosely. Now, the thing that makes this very tedious is that the same race can show up two, maybe three times. The same time trial can show up maybe two, maybe three times. If there's a track you really don't like, well, you're gonna have to do it at least twice. If there's a time trial that you're having a very hard time trying to get the time on it, and you eventually just squeeze through by less than a second, well, unfortunately, you're probably gonna have to do that again, but with an even quicker time. Now you can turn the AI down to easy if you're having a tough time, or if it's too easy, you can turn it up to extreme challenging mode. But yeah, it just gets a little bit long and a little bit boring. And the boss races, I don't know if the term boss race should have been used here, because it's certainly not that. What they mean by boss race is the track has a certain mechanic to it, which is a part of the track. And if you beat that boss race, you'll get that part of the track to use in the track editor. For instance, we have the Jurassic Predator, which is a pterodactyl. And as you're racing through this track, you'll see tornadoes flying left and right on the track where if you hit, it'll pick up your car, make you float around for a couple of seconds and put you back down. Or you have the Haunted House, where in certain parts of the track, three ghosts will appear. If you hit one of them, your screen will get gunk on it, making it hard to see. Now there are five races like this, though I will say the first one you'll probably come up against, which is called the Nitro Bot, is by far the best track in this game and makes me very excited to see how people are going to be using the track editor. This track is basically split between three lanes. The lanes are basically all turbo pads, but they'll change. Sometimes it'll be a boost, making you go forwards. Sometimes it'll be a reverse, slowing you down, and they'll change as you're racing across them. Again, I think this is going to be a fan favorite map, and I hope people make more tracks like this. So yeah, the single player isn't the best. I feel like they could have done something a little bit different. Maybe have each of the environments being an area and you play through all those tracks, you do a time trial on each of them, and then maybe at the end, there is an actual boss race where you get a certain Hot Wheels car. For instance, maybe you race against Bone Shaker and the AI on that car is a little bit harder and you have these obstacles on the track that you need to avoid. I feel like that would have been a little bit better and then beating that boss would have unlocked their car. Something like that might have been a bit more fun than what we got. We then, of course, have the track builder. Now there are 45 tracks in this game in total, split between five different environments, the basement, the skate park, the college campus, the garage, the skyscraper, and the track room, but there are no tracks in the track room. This is just an empty canvas for you to make tracks in. And the tracks are pretty varied. There's a lot of fun tracks here, though at some point they kind of all merge together because they are all just built out of the same stuff. And tracks feature a lot of different mechanics to them. For instance, you do have speed pads. You do have pads that slow you down. You have a spider that will shoot web on the track. And if you get stuck in the web, well, it will slow you down to nothing. You have a giant snake mouth that will open and close. And you need to make sure you get into it before it closes. You have loop de loops where if you're not getting enough speed, you will fall off the track. And you even have gravity sections of the track where you are upside down. And if you're not on the gravity section of the path, you'll fall off. There's also a lot of neat shortcuts in these pre-built tracks that aren't obvious the first time you play them, and you might need to do a little bit of exploring. 
If you are someone who likes building tracks, you're gonna have a field day here. And I think there are gonna be some really, really high quality creations here that I hope the devs put into, say, the online rotation of tracks for people to play on. I had a brief go at making my own track and I don't really like doing this kind of stuff. I'll wait for people to make tracks, but I was straight in there. I put together a few different bits of the track and it was super simple and super easy. But again, there's a lot of depth here with all the different items you can use, all the different pieces of tracks. There's a lot of customization. You can make your tracks different color. You can bend them around in weird shapes. You can add the magnetic sections of the track. You can add checkpoints. You don't have to add checkpoints. I would love to see a track where maybe you start at one point and the finish line is somewhere else and there's a lot of different routes to get there and it's okay i'm gonna go for this route and hopefully it's the quickest route or i'm gonna fly off the track maybe use some parts of the environment to get to the finish line quickly i think stuff like that could be super cool here more sort of fun race types than just strictly three lap races one thing i'll also add on to the pre-built tracks is they come in three different lengths short medium and long the long ones where you're doing three laps that can take around seven minutes you also have point to point races which I think were my favorite. But overall, the track selection is good here. Again, they all kind of blend into one track eventually because they're all just the same plastic pieces. But yeah, give this game a month, two months, and there are gonna be some crazy tracks that can rival the things you see in Track Mania and GTA Online stunt races. Now, another part of this game, which I think fans are gonna be over the moon with, that hasn't really been highlighted that much other than a trailer, is the livery editor, how you customize your cars. Think of it like the customization in, say, Forza, or maybe like an old Call of Duty emblem editor. You go into whichever car you want, minus the branded cars like the Batmobile or the TMNT mobile, and you have all these different layers. You can go in, change all the different pieces of the car to different colors, to different types of plastic. If you want a bright, shiny chrome car, you can do that. If you want a very matte black car, you can do that. You can change the color of the rims, you can change the color of the tires, and then you can go into the layer editor and using all the different types of layers they have, put together a cool creation of a car and then share that online for other people. Or if you're like me, you can just go on and find other people's designs and put them on your car. I don't know why they didn't show more of this before the game launched, but if you are someone who loves creating cars in Forza and things like that, this is really gonna speak to you. And there's even a photo mode, so once you're done creating your dream car, creating your dream track in your basement, which is your fully customizable area, allowing you to mix and match things with items you gain through the single player, well then you can take your dream photo in that photo mode. And the photo mode, again, is pretty in depth here. Exposure, aperture, depth of field, all that kind of stuff you'd expect, it's here. Now of course there is also multiplayer races, and the multiplayer, it's pretty basic. I've only done a couple of races because there haven't been that many people to race against, but it's simply, you go into a lobby, you race against 11 other people, there are a few different things you can change. For instance, the course, you can have players vote on three different courses or you can just pick what track you wanna play on. You can turn collision on and off. I have a feeling people might gravitate to collision off eventually because again, there'll be a lot of bumping and knocking people off the track. And then you can restrict it to certain vehicle types. So only rare, only common, only legendary, so on and so forth. Hopefully in the future we have cups. I think that'd be cool doing a series of races and maybe some unlockables other than just Hot Wheels coins, because maybe once you've got all the cars, what's really the incentive of racing against other people if you're not earning anything other than just to beat people? So overall, I think this game is a ton of fun and the developers of this game have done justice to Hot Wheels. This is arguably the best Hot Wheels game we've ever had. It is a ton of fun and I think this game is only gonna grow as it progresses with people making all these different crazy tracks creating all these different paint jobs, and we know expansions and DLCs are coming. One thing that might stop this game from really growing though is crossplay. This game doesn't have any crossplay with other platforms. Yes, within your same platform, so if you're on PS4 and PS5, you can play with each other. If you're on Xbox One or Series X or S, you can play with each other. You do have a Hot Wheels Unleashed profile in this game, so maybe down the line they can add full crossplay integration, but that is something that could end this game's life pretty quickly. We've seen that with other games, but there's just no one to play with, but there will be other people on other platforms, and if they could all just play together, that would be great. If I was to give this game a rating out of 10, I think I'd give Hot Wheels Unleashed an 8.5. Super solid, super fun time, can be a bit frustrating in certain parts. The single player is nothing to write home about and can be super tedious, but if you're just looking for a fun racer with Hot Wheels cars, 
this is the game for you. And I'm excited to dive back in and hopefully be playing this game six months down the line with a crazy ton of new cars, customization options and tracks to play on. So let me know in the comments below, are you someone who's been highly anticipating this game and you just can't wait to dive into it? Maybe you've been waiting for a view like this and this has helped push you over the edge to now get the game. Let me know. If you did enjoy this review, then click that like button. And if you want more Hot Wheels Unleashed content, then make sure you subscribe because there's going to be a lot of cool videos over the next couple of days. Apart from all that though, cheers for watching and for hanging out with me. I do super appreciate it. Hopefully I'll catch you in some future content, but until then, as always, make sure you take care. Bye-bye.